Hi everyone, KidMax Live is about to start. I wanted to let you know that this will be our last KidMax Live for a little while. As you are well aware, summer is here, which is so much fun. And we're gonna be taking a little break from KidMax Live as we work to produce some other content that we hope will help families even more to engage in KidMax at home. Now for this week and for every week throughout the summer, you can always find our activities to do on the parent blog. Also, you can check out our Instagram account to see what other kids are doing. And all summer long, if you wanna send us pictures of the fun you're having as a family or some of the KidMax stuff you're getting up to, you can always send us an email at kidmax at themeetinghouse.com. Well, I really hope you enjoy this week's episode of KidMax Live. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Hey everyone, my name's MJ and I'm an Oakville Youth Leader and I am just so happy that you decided to join us for KidMax Live today. Welcome to you and your family or whoever you may be watching with this morning. Even though we're all still at home, I always feel really happy on Sunday mornings knowing that we get to hang out with one another in this way through KidMax Live. So thanks so much for joining us. Before we get started with anything else, I wanted to take a quick moment and just show you some of the photos that you sent us this past week of the crafts and the different things that you're up to throughout the week. This is one of my favorite parts of KidMax Live because I'm always so blown away by your creativity and this week was no exception. You all did such an amazing job, so thanks so much for sending us those photos. Be sure to also tune in at the end of KidMax Live today to see some more of those photos. How about we check in now with our preschool friends to see what we have planned for them this week. You'll notice that this month, the big idea changes a little bit each week. Today's big idea is that the good news is Jesus shows us God's love. And to learn more about that, here's Natalie who's gonna read us a super cool story. Over to you, Natalie. Thanks, and hi friends. It's so good to be with you again. I am going to read for you today from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And this story is called Running Away. You might also know it as the story of the lost son from Luke 15. Jesus told this story about a boy who ran away. Once upon a time, there was a boy and his dad. Now one day, the boy gets to thinking, hmm, maybe if I didn't have my dad around telling me what is good for me and all that all the time, I'd be happier. He's spoiling all my fun, the boy thinks. Does my dad really want me to be happy? Does my dad really love me? The son never thought of that before, but suddenly he doesn't know anymore. So the son goes to his father and says, Dad, I'm better off without you. I can look after myself. Just give me my share of your money. His father is sad, but he won't force his boy to stay. So he gives his son what he wants. The son takes the money and goes on a long, long journey to a far off land. And everything's wonderful and perfect for a while. He can go wherever he wants, do whatever he wants, be whoever he wants. He is the boss and he is free. Sometimes he gets a strange, hungry, homesick feeling inside his heart. But then he just eats more or drinks more or buys more clothes or goes to more parties until it goes away. But soon his money runs out and so do his friends. He ends up getting the only job he can find, feeding pigs. Oh, <clears throat> one day he is so hungry and so desperate, he even tries some pig food. What am I doing, he says suddenly, as if he has woken from a nightmare. He spits, yuck, all of it, ugh, out of his mouth. My father is rich, and here I am, in a pigsty, eating piggy food. He wipes off his mouth and dusts himself off. I am going home. As he starts for home, though, he begins to worry. Dad won't love me anymore. I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. So he practices his I'm sorry speech. All this time, what he doesn't know is that day after day, his dad has been standing on his porch, straining his eyes, looking into the distance, waiting for his son to come home. 
He just can't stop loving him. He longs for the sound of his boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. The sun is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will the dad do? Fold his arms and frown and shout, that'll teach you, and just you wait, young man. No, that's not how this story goes. The dad leaps off the porch, races down the hill, through the gap in the hedge, up the road. Before his son can even begin his I'm so sorry speech, his dad runs to him, throws his arms around him, and can't stop kissing him. Let's have a party, his dad shouts. My boy's home, he ran away. I lost him, but now I have him back. Jesus told them, God is like the dad who couldn't stop loving his boy. And people are like the son who said, does my dad really want me to be happy? Jesus told people this story to show them what God is really like and to show people what they are like too. So they could know however far they ran, however well they hid, however lost they were, it wouldn't matter because God's children could never run too far or be too lost for God to find them. And that includes you and me too. You can never run too far or be too lost for God to find you. I'm so glad we got to share that story together. And now back over to you guys. Isn't that amazing that God will never stop loving us? Thanks so much, Natalie, for reading us that story and for reminding us of that. Now let's take a look at our crafts for today. Now it's time to get your Play-Doh out because we're gonna be making little people and heart shapes to remind us to celebrate the good news that Jesus shows us God's love. I am just so excited to see how your creations turn out. So remember to send us pictures at inmax at themedianhouse.com. How about we move on now to see what we have planned for our grade one to five friends. Today's big idea is that God created a good world and sin polluted it. For our God Stories this month, we have a big surprise. The 8-Bit Bible is back. Let's take a look. In the beginning, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, not even air. But God was there, and He created the whole world and everything in it, just by speaking. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Then He separated the light from the darkness and called the light day and the darkness night. He separated the water below from the water above. He called the water above sky, and the water below, well, water. Next, he created the dry ground and trees and all sorts of beautiful flowers and plants to grow on it. And God looked, and it was all very good. The next day, God created the sun to shine during the day and the moon and all the stars to shine at night, and it was good. Then, he created all sorts of birds to fly through the sky and all of the fish and creatures that live underwater. And it was good. God then created animals and all the creatures that live on land. Monkeys, giraffes, tigers, hippos, he created them all. And finally, God created man and woman and put them in charge of everything he had created. And it was very good. Then God rested and enjoyed his creation. That was so much fun. And don't you worry, there is more where that came from. For our life story today, we'll check in with Natalie, Jacob, and a group of other friends who talk about how sin is like missing the mark, and they compare that to throwing axes and sometimes missing the target. How cool is that? For a small group today, we're going to take a look at how you could help someone who is hurt by sin. Let's check in with a few friends. Hi, everyone. We're the Jory family. My name is Laura. This is Charlie, Henry, Eloise, and Amelia. And we're excited to show you one of the activities that was in our KidMax lesson for this week. This was an additional activity that is there and invites the kids to um, look at some scenarios where someone is acting unkindly, hurting someone's feeling, as an example of what it looks like when sin is a part of our world. And then how, when we invite and follow the example of Jesus into those scenarios, um, that it makes such a difference in how we interact with people, in how we um, show our faith and our love for Jesus. So we are gonna act out for you a situation uh, that really happens in our house, probably on a kind of regular basis, uh, but we're reenacting it to show you the example of what it looks like 
and then potentially how we could change it. So, hope you enjoy. Here we go. I asked Amelia to play in the backyard, but Amelia said no and wanted to play Lego instead. Ella was mad and after a few minutes, came up and smashed Amelia's Lego creation that she had been working on for a few days. Amelia was so upset and almost felt mad at her sister. So after we had reenacted this um, episode that really happened in our family, we wanted to just connect it to what we're learning about in KidMax this week. And so our big idea that we've heard about is about how sin pollutes the world, but Jesus can clean that up and make a difference. And so we wanted to talk about what were the sins or what were the bad choices that were causing damage in this situation. So what was an example of an unkind choice, a bad choice, or a sin? And what happened with us here? Um, jealousy. Loudly. Jealousy? Where did you see jealousy? Um, Ella was kind of jealous because they wanted to play Lego instead of going into the backyard with her. Okay. Um, my rage. Rage? Anger? Where did you see that happening? Um, when I was trying to hurt Amelia by knocking in her Lego thing that she made off of the thing to break it. Right. Ella was really angry, maybe because her feelings were hurt too, but she was feeling really angry and feeling like um, she was so upset that she wanted to hurt Amelia's feelings or destroy something that she had been making. So those are definitely examples of, of sin, of not good choices that are causing damage. And so we also wanted to talk about what difference it would make if we invite the example of Jesus into this scenario and in a few different places, if we're responding in the way that Jesus would show us and invite us to treat each other, how that would change the situation. So we're gonna show you some of what we came up with as that part of the discussion too. Maybe Amelia and Ella could work to agree on a plan together, caring for each other and putting other needs first. After her outburst, Ella realizes the pollution of her choice and makes it right by saying sorry and helping to fix it. Well, that's unfortunately all we have planned for Kid Max Live today, but thanks so much for hanging out with us. That's it for KidMax Live this season. And as we mentioned earlier, we'll be taking a short break for the summer, but we already can't wait to be back in the fall. And I really hope you'll join us when KidMax Live returns. I hope you have a great time worshiping with your family. But right now is also a good chance to work on those activity sheets or join your family for the teaching and see what we can learn together. And as I promised earlier, here are some of the amazing photos of the crafts that you did. J-E-S-U-S means that God's the best. Yes, he shows us God is love. God is love. J-E-S-U-S means that God's the best. Yes, he shows us God is love. God is love. Jesus came for everyone. Amazing grace, God sent his son well. Hallelujah. 